Okay. Um, so now it's factored. We can set our factors equal to zero. Cosine of theta is equal to zero. We just did that a second ago. That is at pi over two and three pi over two. Those should not be an issue in this problem because when we go back to the original, we only have cosines. Cosine of three pi over two and pi over two um, are obviously um, defined. They're equal to zero. So it's not a problem this time. Uh, for the other one, this is going back to a couple days ago when we were doing those simple trig equations. Add the square root of 3, divide by 2, find the value on the unit circle. Um, that would be pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Okay, and again, you could check it. Uh, make sure you put that extra set of parentheses around the cosine since it's cosine squared. I'm not going to take the time to do that. Okay, so we've looked at two different types of factoring so far. Okay, example number three, uh, we had two different trig functions completely, cosine and tangent. We still moved everything to one side as equal to zero. We pulled out what they had in common. Number four, we had the same trig function, but it had different exponents. Still, same thing. We got it equal to zero. We pulled out a GCF. Let's look at number five. Number five is similar to number four. Uh, we've got sine and sine squared this time. So again, anytime you see something squared, it really it needs to be equal to zero. Um, it's positive where it's at, so I'm going to move what's on the right side. So I'm going to add the 3 and subtract the 3 sine of theta, and I'm going to put that in standard form, meaning I'm going to put my squared term first, then my linear term, and then my constant term. So we've got 2 sine squared of theta minus 3 sine of theta plus 1. So we have negative 2 plus 3. Okay, this one, another little variation. Okay. This one, we can't pull out GCF because these are the first two terms, not the only terms that we have. That plus one prevents us from pulling out a GCF. So with factoring, if it's not a GCF and it's got three terms, we've got to resort to two sets of parentheses. Okay. What times what equals two sine squared of theta? Well, that would be two sine of theta times sine of theta. 2 sine theta times sine theta is 2 sine squared of theta. What times what equals 1? Well, we're lucky there. We only got one choice. 1 times 1. It's a positive 1, so it has the same signs. The 3 is negative, so they are both negatives. You can check it real quick. The outside gives us negative 2 sine. The inside gives us negative 1 sine. That's negative 3 sine together. And then negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Same thing here that I showed you in the previous problem. If those trig functions are just totally tripping you out, go over here to the side. Write that as 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. You can factor that, or you should be able to. 2x times x, 1 and 1, minus and minus. And then you just put the trig function back in there. And you end up with what uh, we just produced right there. Okay. Any questions about my factoring there? Okay, set the two factors equal to zero. Solve them individually. Two sine of theta minus one is equal to zero. Sine of theta minus one is equal to zero. I'm going to solve the easier one first. Just add the one. Sine of theta is equal to one. That only occurs in one place. Uh, that is at pi over two. Pi over 2 is not an issue in this problem because we only have signs in the original equation, so pi over 2 is fine. It's only an issue if you have tangent in the original problem. Uh, add 1 to both sides. 2 sine theta is equal to 1. Divide by 2. Sine of theta is equal to 1 half. That's at pi over 6. And 5 pi over 6. 
So this one has three solutions. We've had two solutions, we've had four solutions, we've had three solutions. We can have any number of solutions. There's no true way to be able to tell at the very beginning of the problem. Yes? Uh, sine is the y coordinate. The y coordinate is equal to 1. But pi over 2 is between 0 and 2 pi. Not 2 pi. Not, it's pi over 2, not 2 pi. It's all good. It's all good. It's Thursday. We're tired. All right, one more to make sure we've got it. Let's look at a tangent example. This one's going to bless you. This one's going to be like the one we just did. Um, we have tangent squared on both sides. So let's move it so that it's positive. So let's subtract it from the right side. So that means we will add the 1 to the left side as well. So 2 tangent squares minus a tangent squared leaves us with 1 tangent squared of theta minus 2 tangent of theta plus 1 is equal to 0. Okay, so three terms. There's not a GCF. So we've got to go to two sets of parentheses. Tangent of theta times tangent of theta is tangent squared. 1 times 1 is 1. There's a negative in the middle, so both of those are minus. So in this case, we end up, this was a perfect square trinomial. So we end up with the same factor twice. You don't have to solve it twice. If it's exactly the same, you only need to solve it once. Tangent of theta minus 1 is equal to 0. So we add the 1. Where is tangent equal to 1? Uh, tangent is equal to 1 at pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4 where sine and cosine have the exact same value and the same signs. So first quadrant and third quadrant. So this one only had two solutions. So again, any combination here. We could still have two. We could have as many as four. We could probably potentially have more than four. I think four is usually the most we have, though, with quadratic. Okay. 